Hey, what's going on guys? ZTA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you guys how to build the Ghetto Pie version 2. I did a video on this a few days ago. I'm going to go over the parts. All links are in the description. First up, you'll need a 5 inch HDMI screen. This is a WaveShare screen. They're about 35 bucks on Amazon. Really cool little screen, not too high resolution, but it works great. Comes with some brass standoffs and it's powered through the GPIO pins on the Pi. I'm using a Pi 3, 32 gigabyte SD card, back plate. I printed this, I 3D printed this, but you could use acrylic or wood from your local craft store. You might want a couple zip ties, a six inch micro USB cable, some assorted wire, you don't need this style, and you'll need a battery bank. Now I chose these pocket juice battery banks. This is 4,000 milliamp hour. They're $2.50 at Walmart. They make several styles, but I'm gonna go with the square style because it fits a lot better. The round one does also fit. And I also soldered an external button. I'll show you how to do that. And finally, you'll need the IPEGA Spider 9055 controller. It's a Bluetooth controller that works with Android, iOS, and the Raspberry Pi. First step, you're gonna need to make some holes in your mounting plate. Now, if you chose to use wood, acrylic, or a 3D printed style like I have here, you can figure it out. You can either use a drill, a hole punch. I used a hot knife and I'll leave the exact dimensions that I used in the description below. So if you're using wood or acrylic, you can definitely use something like a drill or even an old poker. But I used an old soldering iron, just heated it up a little bit and I poked holes. I lined it up and I poked the holes so I had a perfect lineup with the back plate. You might need to improvise depending on what kind of material you're using, but I only put three and three holds it for me right now, but I definitely suggest doing all four holes. So mounting the screen to the Raspberry Pi is very straightforward. It comes with an HDMI adapter. We will need to edit some files on the SD card to get the screen to display the proper resolution. And I'll go over that after we're done building this. You can use tweezers to get this card in and out. So it just sits right on top of the Raspberry Pi, connects through the GPIO pins, and we're gonna take the HDMI adapter and plug it right in. That's it. We now have a screen mounted to the Raspberry Pi 3. Your screen should have come with these standoffs. If it didn't, you can actually order these on eBay or Amazon, and they just screw right on. Pretty easy to do, put all four on and you're good to go. So here's where things get a little bit complicated. I mean, it's not too bad. You do not have to solder this external button to your power supply if you do not want to. But as you can see, these contain a small button inside. And all I did was make an extension. Very easy to do. If you're not comfortable with it, you don't have to make an extension button. You can always turn it on and off by the pack itself. The big problem with doing something like this is you do run the risk of destroying the circuit board. So do this part at your own risk. If you don't want to add an external button, like I said, you don't have to. For the back plate here, I'm just going to bolt the screen right onto it using the supplied brass standoffs. I'm going to start my screw here. And this really depends on what kind of material you use. Like I said, you can use wood or acrylic. I just 3D printed this. The dimensions are in the description. All we want to do is mount the Raspberry Pi and screen to this back plate. There we have it. It's all mounted up. Now to remove and insert your SD card, I definitely recommend a pair of little tweezers or something like that just to reach in there. I'm going to go ahead and mount my battery underneath the screen using a 6 inch micro USB cable. It's actually a pretty high quality one. I'll try to leave a link down below. I'm just going to run my wires underneath the screen on top of the back plate. Since I did the button extension for the battery pack, I'm going to hot glue it to the back plate also. I'm just going to make sure all the wires fit in here pretty nice and I'm going to zip tie the 6 inch USB cable, just like this. So it looks nice. It's not going to be hanging out too much. I mean, this is the best we can do with something like this. Unless you want to go through the GPIO pins to power this unit. Tons of information online about that, but I figured 
already had this laying around. I'll go ahead and do it this way. You're also going to want to mount the battery pack in place. You can use Velcro, double-sided sticky tape, tape, hot glue, whatever you want to use. For me, I have a little bit of flex in this plate, so I'm going to actually use a little bit of double-sided sticky tape underneath the battery. And I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on the back of this button and mount it to the plate itself. My external battery pack button is mounted in place. We're pretty much done with the build. All we need to do is put the controller on, get the controller paired, and make sure the screen resolution is set up correctly. Just show you how it looks with the controller slapped on. And I already have my SD card set up, but don't worry, I'm gonna go over that in just one second. The controller has a spring-loaded setup in it, and it fits pretty good. You can also use Velcro on the controller itself to the back plate so you don't have to worry about it falling out at all. I haven't mounted my battery yet, so it's kind of slipping out of here. We're gonna move over to the PC. I'm gonna show you how to set up the resolution correctly on this screen. Then I'm gonna show you how to pair the iPega controller because there's a few steps you need to follow. All right, so it's now time to get the screen working correctly. I'm going to edit the config file on my SD card that has RetroPie installed from my PC. Makes it so much simpler. We're gonna to go to Google and download Notepad++. You need this. Go ahead and get it. Quick download, easy install. Insert your SD card into your PC. You'll probably get a pop-up. And you need to go to the boot, mine's boot G, and we need to find the config.txt. We're going to right-click, edit with Notepad++. I'm going to snap it over to the right. In the description, you can download this text document. I created it, easy to use. We're gonna copy everything in this text document. We're gonna go back to Notepad++ in our config file. We're gonna go to line 33. This might change in the future. Just look for HDMI drive equals two. Go right underneath it and paste everything from that text file into our config file. File, save, exit. Now when we put our SD card back into our Raspberry Pi that's hooked to the five inch screen, it'll look normal. Now we're gonna move over to the Raspberry Pi running RetroPi, and we're gonna set up the controller using Bluetooth. So I'm using that iPega Spider 9055. It's easy to get it set up as soon as you know exactly what to do. You will need a keyboard or another controller so we can navigate the RetroPie menu, go into our Bluetooth, we're going to connect the controller and hook it up. Let's move over to the Raspberry Pi now. So now it's time to pair the iPega controller with your Raspberry Pi. This is pretty simple to do, there's a few steps involved, and I recommend connecting a keyboard to your Raspberry Pi. We're going to go into the RetroPie menu, scroll down to Bluetooth, enter this menu, so we want to choose the first option, but we need to put our iPega controller into pairing mode first. Make sure the switch on the side is set to Android. Hold your home button for five seconds till two blue lights start flashing on the controller. Now we're going to pair the controller. Go to register and connect to Bluetooth devices. It's going to search for the controller. Should be listed as PG9055. Make sure it's highlighted. Press OK. Scroll to No Input, No Output. Click OK. Now the two blue lights should be solid on your iPega controller and you should get a message like this. Click OK. We have a few more steps to do. Set up UDEV rule for Joypad. Now I've already done this, but we just need to enter this. Choose your controller, which will be the PG9055. So I've already done it here, but on your screen, it should tell you for this to take effect, you need to reboot. Click OK. We need to scroll down to configure Bluetooth connect mode. You want to make sure it's set to connect to devices in the background. We're going to go to cancel. We're going to press start on our controller or keyboard, scroll to quit. We need to restart the system. Yes.
So after you reboot, you might notice that your lights are out on the iPega controller. That's totally fine. Just hold your home button again. It'll pair back up with the Raspberry Pi. We now need to configure the controller. So on our extra controller or keyboard, we're going to press start. Scroll to configure input. Are you sure you want to configure input? Yes. We're going to hold A on our iPega controller. And as you can see, it detected it. And we'll just set it up like we would any other controller. So now we can use the controller in the emulation station menu, but it will not work in games just yet. We want to scroll to RetroPie, go to RetroArch, enter this menu. Now if you're using a keyboard for this, X is select, Z is back. Scroll down to settings, driver, joypad driver, and make sure it's set to SDL2. You can press left or right to select. Make sure it's on SDL2. We're going to back up twice. Go to configurations. And we want to save current configuration. We'll back up. Exit RetroArch. So that's it. Your iPega Spider controller is now paired with your Raspberry Pi and it should work inside of the emulators. I'm going to give it a test real quick with a Super Nintendo game, Play Fighter 2. Just start a game. And I really do like this controller. The battery lasts for a long time and it works great with Android tablets and phones also. I'll just choose Frosty. It's working good in this emulator. As long as you followed the steps correctly, you should have no trouble setting up your iPega Spider controller in RetroPie. Every time you reboot the system, you will need to hold the home button in order to pair it back up, but it only takes two to three seconds to do so. So yeah, it's working good. I'm gonna exit out of here. And that's it. You now have a portable Raspberry Pi. We're gonna move back over to the table. I'm gonna give you a little demo. I'll pair the controller with the Raspberry Pi. We'll get the two flashing lights and it should connect to the Raspberry Pi now. So I really appreciate you guys watching. This is kind of my super ghetto boy version two. I did one a long time ago with an SNES controller. I completely understand that somebody else could definitely go out and do something much better than this, but I had this stuff laying around and I had a lot of people ask me to make a build video on it. It's relatively inexpensive and it works. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. The reason I use a Raspberry Pi with RetroPie is to play retro games. That's it. This works great. You could definitely take it with you if you have to. 4,000 milliamp hour battery does last for a long time. I would say two and a half to three hours of gameplay on this unit. And my cat wants to play. Really appreciate you guys watching. If you could hit that like button and subscribe. I got a lot more coming. All the links are down below in the description. Like always, thanks for watching.